Sometimes we don't have all the free time to dedicate to video games, so here is a list of shorter games for you to enjoy. It took me just under five hours to make my way through 17 levels of Panzer Paladin. This game definitely gives inspiration from the SNES NES games from before. The music is rocking, the art style, I'm really loving it here, and it's just a really good old time. Plus, you get to be a mech carrying around a hockey stick. You really can't go wrong with that. Now this little gem right here will make you feel so good while you're playing it. Just the, the nostalgia of an old 3D platformer come to life once again. It took me just under four hours to finish New Super Lucky's Tale, but you can definitely go a lot further. If you got that collector bug going, you can have quite a bit of fun with this one. It's got an interesting art style, fun little characters, and you got these cool side platforming parts that kind of remind me of Donkey Kong Country. And you can't go wrong with just a good 3D platform. It doesn't need to be the best, it doesn't need to be Mario Galaxy quality to have fun with it. So go have fun with New Super Lucky's Tale. We are gonna stick with the animal theme here, and let's just have a really good time about a very, very simple challenge. Let's get into the top of a mountain. A short hike barely took me over an hour to beat, and it is one of the best experiences I've had on the Nintendo Switch. It is full of charm, and when you're in the right mood, it is perfect, like that nice piece of cheesecake after a nice hearty meal. It won't take a lot of time out of your day, but it will leave an impact on your heart. Explore, enjoy the animal friends you will run into, and at the end of this you might just realize it's all about the simple things. What doesn't take a lot of time is to make sure you are subscribed down there and maybe hit that bell and notified when a new video comes out. Both of us brothers would really appreciate it. Sonic Mania is the only game on this list that I actually haven't beaten. I got stuck on, I believe, either the second to last or the last level and I just haven't gotten back to it but it'll take you about five and a half to six hours if you're just focusing on the main objective and not exploring. This is considered one of the best Sonic games and you get to play as my boy Knuckles, who I love his little glide. I do really like a lot of the levels in this. You know, they took past levels and then made their own. I love having that familiarity and then also the new stuff. And if you're a Sonic fan and you have not played this, what are you doing? It doesn't even take that long to beat, if you can beat it. And if you've never tried a Sonic game, this is a great one to jump in on. This next one is also another really short game that came out what seemed like such a long time ago, back in 2017. Kamiko basically plays like a Zelda and arcade game combined into one. It's a very short experience with three different characters to play as with different movesets. It took me just over an hour to beat this game, and you know, I enjoyed my time with it. It was very short, I don't know if I'll go back to play through the other characters, but there is a little question mark at the menu that I did not unlock, so maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I'll be teased to. It should only take me a total of three hours then. It might be even be quicker. The music is pretty freaking rocking in this game too. Speaking of rocking music, I cannot get this song out of my head. It's so good. talked about nostalgia for 3d platformers well let's talk about just the turtles in general ah, i love it i love it with a buddy over at my place it took me just over two and a half hours to make it to the end of the campaign but there is a lot more to do i could play with different characters level them up 
you can try and finish the objectives, but man, those levels where you can't get hit at once to get an objective, I don't know how you do that. I'm not that good at beat em ups. Variety of levels, the enemy designs, this game oozes just charm and talent and freaking turtles. I was my boy Donatello. I do like Michelangelo as well, but give this game a shot and two and a half hours you'll make it through it and then you know you can come back for another grind session maybe in a, another weekend or so <laughs> super crush ko took me just a little bit over two and a half hours to get through and the main praise I can give this game is when you get into the flow of combat, it feels no, it's so good. Enemy design, not really feeling it. And, you know, it kind of is simple. Once you get all the moves, that's kind of it. But I don't need that much in a two and a half hour experience. It's got a very chill vibe with the color palette. You know, just go in with an open mind. And I think you'll have fun with it. It's that perfect in between bigger meaty experiences. This is literally the first game I played after I beat Elden Ring, so that kind of fits. Next up is the longest game on the list, but in its genre, it's considered short. Say hello to the little indie darling called Shadows of Adam. It took me a little bit under 11 hours to find the end of this RPG adventure, and it goes quick. It's got great music, it's got an interesting turn battle system where you are accruing your magic points at the end of each turn so you don't have to worry about being frugal with your ultimate moves or anything like that. But my main takeaway is it's hard to make a game funny and this game actually is pretty funny. The character interactions are just fantastic. And I really like the lead up in the last dungeon, you kind of get a bunch of story tidbits and there's some pretty interesting themes going on here. I think it wrapped up in the emotional uptick at the end really sold this for me. Definitely check it out. Under 11 hours, a great turn-based RPG for you. A dramatic switch in tone, but here we are with Farlone Sales. One of the best indie games I've played in a very long time. The emotional swell, the questions I had after playing it and it took me just under three hours to find my way to the end of this. You're taking care of a vessel to make it across this place and things happen, and it's just great atmospheric storytelling. Play this game. This next one is a beautiful looking Metroidvania that I don't really see on a lot of people's lists out there, so I'm giving it a shout out with a very, very long name. Record of Lotus War, Deedlet in Wonder Labyrinth is a wonderful little game. It took me just over five and a half hours to find my way to the end. I didn't do every single thing, but I got to see a lot. And man, I was enthralled with this game. So much that I played through it in a single day and I was very satisfied. I don't know much of the connection between the original record of Lotus War series, but you can play this one without knowing that because that's what I did. Really enjoyed it. Found the story bits actually pretty intriguing as well. Check it out. If this is your first time here though, real quick, I do have a lot of other Nintendo Switch videos, so you should check it out. Thora. Bartaga maðurinn sem dó smánar dauða. Þér hefur verið veitt tækifæri til að breyta örlögum þínum. Man, just look at that art style. You get the vibes right away. Jotun took me just under three hours to finish. And this is basically a boss rush type of game, but you have some exploring to do. And it's it's just one of those games, there's not a lot out there like it, but I really, really love this developer. Thunder Lotus Games, man, you can do no wrong so far. Can't wait till your next one. Oh, I thank you for making it all the way here. Here is my number one game for the Nintendo Switch. And of course it has to be here. 
an excellent, excellent experience. Also packaged in with another game that you can spend a lot of time with. But we're talking about this one. Bowser's Fury is so good. It took me a little over six hours to 100% complete the game. That's getting 100 cat shines, but you can obviously do less than that. This list technically isn't tiered, but I had to have this one at number one. It's almost basically my favorite expansion DLC, whatever you want to call this, that I've ever played. I, I enjoy it so much. It shows that Mario can work in the open world concept. I'm super excited. This is just a fun, fun game. Plus, Bowser has never looked so freaking cool in a video game. Best, best form ever. Honestly, if you've written this off, just try it. I promise you, you will have a good time. You might find the Bowser mechanics a little bit annoying. You can get over it. Don't worry. Don't be like my little brother, Larry. Yeah, there's two of us here. Thank you so much for watching this list. Let me know what's your favorite down below and what's some games that you find very short and concise and awesome on your Nintendo Switch to play. I would love to know more, and maybe I can do another list some other day. Who knows?